Hello and welcome back to my channel. Sorry for the long pause, you guys. I was dealing with the birthday party for my sweet two-year-old and Thanksgiving. So, happy belated Thanksgiving to all of you guys in America. Alright, for this card, I am using the Lawn Fawn Pop-Up Desk dies. And I am just cutting out the legs and the top of the desk. And I'm actually running, after I cut one piece, I, run, I flip it and run it through again so that I get the same look on both sides. And I also have some squares and some rectangles that I cut out just using a ruler and an X-Acto knife. These pieces will become my fireplace. So if I didn't mention it already, this is for the Lawn Fanatics Holiday Critters Challenge. So this will be a Christmas scene with critters. All right, I'm going to use Distress Oxides in Walnut Stain and Ground Espresso over this brick stencil. And I am going to first go over my... I keep wanting to say chimney and it's not chimney. <laughs> uh, fireplace. I'm going over my fireplace with my lightest color first and then I will take my darkest brown and I am just going to go over areas here and there to make some bricks darker because if you've ever looked at a fireplace or a brick wall or anything you'll notice there are darker bricks. So I wanted to give it a more realistic look. This card you will notice I did not show you any stamp sets yet, and I don't think I ever get to show you the stamp sets. I managed to figure out the stuff that I wanted in my scene, and then I stamped a bunch of stuff, cut, cut it, and then colored it, and then I decided what I would need to use after I added my fireplace and my little table, and you'll see the other elements that get put in there. So, sorry for that. I will have the... Um, stamp sets listed below. Now you just see me grab my Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide and I'm just lightly inking up my table as well as the other part of the fireplace that is the wooden part and also the floor. Once that's done I'm going to use my E30 marker and my ruler and I'm going to make lines across the floor portion. This is just to give it a wood look and I do go smaller as I get towards the back. That wasn't dark enough, so I pulled out my E31, and I'm just going over my lines yet again. Again, getting a little bit narrower between each one in the back. And now I'm just going to add random lines to make it look like different wood planks. After that's done, I'm just adding little random lines here and there to make it look sort of wood textured. I didn't want it to be too bold, it's just supposed to look like a subtle detail, not a punch in the face detail. All right, here I am using my mustard seed distress oxide as well as my black soot distress oxide. And for these two squares, one's cut out of the other. And I'm just going center will be yellow and then the outside will be black. And this is just supposed to help with my flames later. All right, my red combo is... R22, R35, R37, and R39. At some point, I have to retire my R22 marker as it is dry. I need a refill for it. I just haven't done that. And right now with holiday shopping and everything, it's just not going to happen. So, rest in peace, R22. <laughs> um, here, I'm just coloring little elements. This is stockings and ornaments as well as a candy cane. I was trying to color everything I knew that I wanted red first and then move on to additional colors. Now the main colors in my scene are um, red, gold, and green, which I cheated because the gold that I use is gold paint. It's not markers to look like gold. I just felt like most of these things were a little bit too small to get a good golden look and I still struggle with that a little bit. So yeah, totally cheated. Here is one of the little wrapping paper things from Holiday Helpers. It's actually supposed to have like additional paper coming off of the roll. But I decided that I needed some still wound up rolls. That way I could put it behind my little critters or whatever. Because I know when I wrap presents, I usually have two or three rolls of wrapping paper. Just because I like variation. <laughs> Alright, here... I thought I was going to do candy cane stripes, and that looks awful. 
I tried to fix it. It still looks awful. I don't like it. So I'm just coloring over it with my lightest color. And then I go a little bit darker because I still don't like it. And sorry I'm off screen. But at some point it gets to where all the light lines are pretty much gone and it doesn't look quite so bad anymore. And then I take my white jelly roll, which I think that was 8, size 8. And I just add my little white lines instead of red lines on white. And while I've got my jelly roll out, I'm just adding a little highlights here and there. Again, with red ornaments. Like I said, I try to get all the red things first. I don't know. It's been a while since I made this card. I can't remember if I was successful or if I had to pull things back out later. But if you see me use a red combo later, it's this. Alright, now I'm using the smaller jelly roll and I am making little kind of snowflake designs on one of the rolls of wrapping paper. And here's a little plate of cookies. This was actually from an exclusive stamp set. It might be found elsewhere though. But it was from the, what was it, Eat Sleep? Be Merry exclusive. It was um, Stamp Timber exclusive. So it's not available anymore, but it had sloths. I just thought the little cookies on the plate and the cup of milk was cute. Definitely look at all of the stamp sets that you have that you could use different elements from. That's usually what I do. I usually either look through my binder because when I get new stamps, I stamp all of them. And that way I can just flip through a book and I can see all of what I have. But I either do that or I pull out all of my stamps that I could be using. Like for Lawn Fawn, I pull out all the Lawn Fawn stamps. And I go through and look at each stamp set and see if there's anything I can use. And for this, it was gifts cookies, ornaments, candy canes, wrapping paper. I even found a couple things to use for like home decor or appliances, I guess, if you want to call it a lamp and appliance. I'm not sure. <laughs> In a little bit, when you see me pull out my gold paint, I will have something similar linked. But the one I have, I think I just got it from Hobby Lobby. It was maybe one of their brands. But I made sure it was not watered down very much at all because this is not paper that will hold a lot of water. I'll leave you guys with some music while I finish coloring and painting. All right, I'm going to pop in to say real quick, there's some missing footage, thanks to my children. And <laughs> that little tree with the um, tree skirt under it is actually going to be underneath the cutout tree. I just wanted a little bit of dimension there. So that's all that was. I also realized that I don't think that I managed to get my green color combination listed, which was, I think... G00, G02, G05, and G09 maybe. Or maybe there was a G17. I don't know. It was some number of those.
Now here is my brown color combo that I will be using for pretty much everything that's brown. Um, for the logs and the little fire is actually from the S'more the Merrier stamp set. Um, I needed a flame and some logs in my fireplace so I found these. I felt like the flame was a little bit large so I actually cut it down a little so it wasn't so big. Alright, now that my coloring is done, I am going to adhere all my elements down. First, I adhere my floor down to my card base, and I use liquid glue for that. Next, I use some foam tape to pop up my cutout tree on the tree with the tree skirt. And I'm just trying to figure out where I'm placing all my ornaments and candy canes, and I'm just using liquid glue to adhere all of that. And once I'm done with that, I move on to... Placing down the things that I know need to be placed down first and making sure that I have room for my fireplace. So here is my little flame and oh my goodness, so much of that disappeared. Wow. All right. You can see I glued a lot down. All this background stuff is flat. There are like, I think the mice I popped up. I popped up some of the presents. Some of the presents I left flat. And, you know, here you'll see I'm cutting a little um, hole in that box so I can stuff the train in it to make it look like it's actually sitting in the box. And then my little mouse here, I am actually cutting around the little arm and leg so that I can put the nice list in its hand and it'll actually look like it's holding it. You'll see when I use the foam tape, I do try to show you like this little mouse right here is popped up on foam tape. The other little mouse is popped up on foam tape. Now here I have that little picture frame and because I couldn't find any stamps that were small enough to fit in it the way I wanted that said what I needed it to, I just decided to write it myself. So I put peace and joy in my less than desirable handwriting. 
And I had actually cut out two of these and I cut out the center of the top one. I just wanted this layered a little bit too to give it a little bit more dimension. I did glue the little nail flat down onto the card base though. And I think after that my card was finished. I do regret that I could not show you how I placed all of my um, fireplace pieces down. But if you just Google pictures of a fireplace and, you know, just look at it for a few minutes. If you break it down into simple shapes, you'll see it's not that difficult to make. It just, you know, for the little wood parts, that was my only real issue. And it really wasn't even hard to make it since I had that pop-up desk die. And that is my finished card. Thank you all so much for watching. I will be back with another video soon. Bye!